I would like to call this meeting to order. We will have an invocation from Chaplain Muhammad Ali via Zoom. Chaplain, here. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessings be upon you all and good afternoon. Let us pray. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful, who holds you and me and all peoples in a single eternal embrace. Lord, we are gathered here today with humble hearts committed to do your work. We praise you, glorify you, and thank you for all that you have provided us and blessed us with. As we undergo the holy month of Ramadan, we pray for strength and nourishment as we undertake this month-long fast from sunrise to sunset. We pray for physical endurance and faith to ease the pain of hunger and bless us with the peace of mind, heart, body, and spirit. We pray for knowing the joy of the blessings of a loving community mutually engaged in the difficult but rewarding work to seek God's pleasure. We pray that we all know the infinite love and mercy of God who appreciates our struggles and sets us gently yet securely back upon our feet. Ramadan commemorates the revelation of God's holy words in the Noble Quran and reminds us that we hear God most clearly when we stand in unity with those most in need. We pray that Ramadan be a time of empathy and solidarity, drawing out the depths of human compassion. As we gather here today, we remind ourselves of the sanctity of every human life, regardless of race, religion, or status. We pray for peace, love, and justice amongst us all around the world, especially the innocent that are in harm's way, the ones that are in hunger, famine, war, and genocide. We pray for peace on our most holy places and spaces around the world to allow those to worship you in safety and free from harm. We praise you, Lord, glorify you, and thank you for all that you have provided and blessed us with. We seek to perfect our worship of you and teach us how to be grateful to you. And finally, we ask you, Lord, to bless this meeting and those present here today with the guidance wisdom, clarity, and good judgment in our words and actions, and to safely return to our homes in peace. For all praise and glory is due to you. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ramadan Mubarak to you all. It may be a happy and joyous month. Amen. 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 Alaykum as-salam. Alaykum as-salam. Thank you. We would now like to have an introduction of our commissioners by our acting secretary. Madam Chair, you don't corn or have a corn. You don't have a corn. Okay. You can go to public comment okay. or staff reports. Okay, thank you. So at this time, I would like to ask Warfield for your community impact report, if there is one at this time. Ma'am, we do not have a community report this time, but I do want to report out to the board um, that the progress on our case management system is moving full speed ahead. And certainly I want to give thanks to the staff, um, Acting Secretary Brown, as well as Mr. Drew Fries, um, who have done just a yeoman's job in making sure that we get the answers back to the various members of the Detroit City Council as it relates to our new case management system. And I also want to say uh, a great big thanks to Commissioner Bell um, for the outstanding job that he continues to do uh, with the new recruits in the academy. Had an opportunity to share with him a few times now, and it's just been a wonderful experience. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you. We now have a quorum. Mr. Brown, could you please proceed with roll call? Chairperson Press, the for an excuse. Uh, Chairperson Smith? Present. Commissioner Bernard. Attorney Linda Bernard, District 2, present. Commissioner Banks, X4, and excuse absent. Commissioner Bell. Present, District 4. Commissioner Burton. Present. Commissioner Carter. Commissioner Moore. Commissioner Hernandez. Present. Commissioner Gamble, X4, and excuse absent. And Commissioner Wood said he'll be running late. Thank you. We'll now proceed to the approval of the agenda of April 4th, 2024. So moved. Second. Hearing no objections to the agenda, the agenda is approved. We'll now proceed with the minutes of March 28th, 2024. 
Move approval. Second. Hearing no objections, the minutes as presented are approved. I'm, I'm gonna object to the minutes. Thank you, as noted. We objected. Uh, Madam Chair, the only way one can object to adoption of the minutes is to have a motion to amend them. Does the commissioner have a motion to amend the minutes that he's objecting to? Well, there there is some some. Excuse me. To the chair, there are some um, some some errors in the minutes, um, and so. For, for Madam Chair, if there are errors in the minutes, this would be the time to point those out. Yes, could you please point the errors out that you have, Commissioner? I don't have. I don't have it. I don't have the minutes okay, so we're moving in front of me forward. at this Thank point, you. but Madam Chair, I just want there to, was some typos in, in, the, in the I just want to let you know you can minutes. always go back and correct minutes yes. of factual errors at any time in the future. So if the commissioner, once he finds those errors, wants to come back and make a motion to amend these minutes, he can do so. But the only way to object to correction, to adopting the minutes, is to have a motion to amend them. Other than that, the minutes are approved. Thank you. Moving forward, we now will have an introduction of the BOPC staff, chief of police, elected officials, representatives, and community leaders. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. We currently have Parliamentary Dr. Francis Jackson, Chief Investigator Jerome Warfield, HR Director Ms. Katrina Patillo, Supervising Investigator, Interim Supervising Investigator Elgin Murphy, Ms. Janya Underwood, Ms. Jasmine T Taylor, Mr. Drew Freeze, sitting in for the chief is Deputy Chief Franklin Hayes, and uh, Representative Ms. Marie Overall, State <coughs> Representative Tyrone Carter's office, and Ms. LaDon Davis, Council Members Fred Drew Hall, the third office, Lieutenant Mark Young, LSA President, and Mr. Ron Thomas, DPO Vice President. Thank you, Mr. Brown. We're now moving forward to our Chief of Police report, who will be given today by Deputy Chief Franklin Hayes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, certainly to this honorable body. Uh, you don't have a quorum. Oh, I'm sorry. So we're moving forward. So we have lost our quorum, and we will move forward to public comments. Ms. Underwood, do we have any oral communication or public comments? Yes, Madam Chair. We have uh, three here in the audience. Uh, the first would be Gordon Farhat, Minister Eric Blunt, and Chris Gilmer-Hill. Uh, good afternoon. I'm named Gordon Farhat. Um, I just want to say that um, I believe it's Detroit Precinct Number Five. The two ladies that do the crisis over there are some of the most amazing people I've ever met. Um, a couple months ago, I looked for missing people, and um, located one. Called them up. Um, she was a 30-year-old, eight, nine months pregnant girl that suffered from um, mental illness. And when these ladies came over there, it was amazing to watch how they reacted with her, um, got her calmed down, got her, got her in the, the car, and got her some help. That's so I want to say they do an incredible job. Thank you. We now have a quorum. And I'm asking for our sit-in deputy chief. Franklin Hayes to continue with your report. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. And again, greetings on behalf of Chief White uh, to this honorable body, uh, those in attendance here, as well as those that are uh, joining us uh, via Zoom. Um, I'd like to start with uh, our injured officers report. We currently have no officers that are uh, out, either disabled uh, or injured, um, recovering from non uh, or on duty incidents. So uh, that is always a, a good report of health, uh, so uh, we are certainly uh, grateful for that. Uh, as it relates to our crime data, we continue to have favorable numbers 
uh, working together. We understand that we don't do this work alone. It is with this community who is tired of this violence that we've had previously and it, with all hands on deck from certainly uh, our, our block clubs, our community groups, our, our, our clergy, uh, our CVI groups, uh, this honorable body, uh, we're able to have some record numbers and certainly there are so many partners that I did not mention, uh, but they certainly had an impact as well. Uh, for our homicides, year to date, we are 29% lower uh, than we were this time last year. We had 56, uh, this year we have 40. Our non-fatal shootings, we are down 19%. Last year we had 160, this year 30 less at 130. Robberies, down 25%. This year we had 329. Last year we had, I'm sorry, last year we had 329. This year we have 248. Uh, and our carjackings, down 31%. Last year, year to date, we had 42. Uh, this year uh, we have 29. Uh, combined for our total part one, uh, violent crimes, we have a 10% reduction where we had a total of 2,743 incidents last year and we have this year 2,474. As the weather's changing, one of the initiatives that we certainly need to set a tone on early, but it's, uh, it's not specific to Detroit, but uh, the uh, lawless driving, uh, drag racing, and drifting uh, throughout uh, our community. We have started that detail. Uh, and from that, we uh, have investigated so far this year, uh, since March 15th, uh, 110 people. We, uh, 57 traffic stops. We've issued 26 citations, uh, not, uh, impounded nine vehicles, uh, recovered four stolen vehicles. We've made 14 felony arrests and recovered nine weapons that were illegally possessed. Uh, we've had uh, 10 police runs. Uh, we did have one vehicle uh, that attempted to flee. And one of the areas that we're focusing on this year to curb this behavior uh, is exercising um, or holding those accountable through city ordinance, uh, drag racing spectators, those that come and watch this event. That too uh, is criminal. Uh, and we uh, have written six tickets for that uh, so far uh, as well. Some of our other initiatives is uh, the first comment, uh, commenter here uh, in that brief public comment section talked about, and we are truly thankful for the training. Mental health is, while it's certainly not a police issue, it's uh, a matter that, that we are, Chief is, is passionate uh, certainly to himself, and he's rolled up his sleeves and made sure that we are all training uh, <coughs> and serve those uh, with this mental health uh, issue. Uh, in this mental health crisis. Uh, just to share our mental health related calls for service, our mental nonviolent, uh, year to date, last year we had 810, this year we are at 913, so we've serviced 100 more uh, mental nonviolent calls uh, this year than last year. Mental violent, uh, last year we had 349, this year we had 333. Mental violent not armed, last year we are at 1,399, this year we are at 1,333. Our suicides in progress, we were at 351 last year, this year we are at 352. And suicide threats, uh, we had 740 last year and 719 this year. Uh, summing all those numbers up, uh, last year, we answered 3,649 calls. This year, we answered 3,650. So we're right in the same area uh, as we look for a solution, but yet we're still committed to having trained officers getting those in need the, the help that they, that they're uh, certainly, uh, that they need. Um, just talking about a few significant incidents. Uh, Want to talk about a fatal stabbing that happened Wednesday, April 3rd, uh, at approximately 9.30 a.m. in the 15,000 block of Mack Avenue, where officers arrived at the location and observed a 40-year-old male victim uh, with multiple stab wounds to his body. Uh, his vehicle was also discovered uh, missing. The victim's 50-year-old, 51-year-old neighbor uh, has been taken into custody for this incident, uh, and as we look to uh, into the investigation, uh, anyone that has any additional information, while we certainly have a suspect in custody, any eyewitnesses as well that may have uh, seen anything, they can contact 1-800-SPEAK-UP, Crime Stoppers, or uh, Detroit Rewards TV. 
Also want to talk about a quintuple non-fatal shooting that happened uh, in the 8200 block of West Chicago uh, for a large fight with shots were fired. Uh, when officers arrived and talked to witnesses that stated several people were shot but all had fled the location. Four victims were private, had privately conveyed themselves to the hospital and the fifth uh, was unable to drive himself, uh, flagged down a scout car for assistance, and then the officers transported him uh, to the hospital. All victims were listed in stable condition. Uh, we were able to identify uh, a suspicious person uh, on the hospital property, and he was taken into custody uh, to the DDC. Uh, this investigation is still ongoing. Uh, anyone with information at this location, uh, at this incident, please call Crime Stoppers or 1-800-SPEAK-UP. I would be remiss to, uh, if I left out Chief White's 12-point strategy, which talks about uh, venue responsibility. And if there's a venue that's operating, that criminality has happened, that now has the attention of the Detroit Police Department, you will get our full focus. Uh, from that, this uh, business uh, was shut down. Uh, for operating uh, uh, outside uh, of what they're licensed to do. Uh, and uh, again, they have a responsibility to patrons uh, to uh, foster a safe environment and again, operate within the confines of their permits. So uh, this is our, our wraparound and our commitment to holding those accountable, certainly those uh, businesses as well as criminals uh, and, and perpetrators uh, throughout our city for uh, incidents of crime. A fatal shooting that happened on April 2nd uh, at 1230 a.m. in the 18,000 block of Klinger, where officers made the location and found the victim lying on the porch suffering from a gunshot wound. A witness stated that she was inside the location when she heard one gunshot. Uh, the victim walked out to the front porch where he collapsed. Uh, per the witnesses at the scene, a firearm was being played with and one of the people present accidentally shot the victim. Uh, homicide is currently investigating, uh, interviewing witnesses and this is still an ongoing investigation. And we'll talk about a fatal shooting that happened March 28th at 3 p.m. in the 14,000 block of Griggs. Uh, when officers arrived, they observed the victim lying inside the location from multiple gunshot wounds. Uh, medics transported the victim to the hospital where he was uh, pronounced uh, deceased. A witness stated that two males uh, were observed fleeing the location and got inside of a white vehicle after hearing five to six gunshots fired. A search warrant was executed at the home and uh, evidence has been recovered, uh, but this investigation is uh, ongoing as well. So again, anyone with any information regarding this incident, please contact Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP or Detroit uh, Rewards TV. Just to share a few positive uh, uh, highlights here, Domestic Violence Awareness Night happened on Monday, April 1st at Detroit Public Safety Headquarters, where in partnership with the Pistons, uh, this donation drive, uh, we were able to uh, give out some Pistons tickets, um, some gifts as well, uh, and ultimately, uh, there were some donations to the Detroit Public Safety uh, Foundation as well to further our efforts to educate the community uh, during awareness events just like this. Uh, tomorrow, Friday, April 5th, uh, is Detroit Tigers opening day where DPD will have a large presence uh, in the footprint uh, in surrounding areas to help direct traffic and ensure that all uh, <coughs> attendees uh, enjoy the day safely. Uh, this Sunday, April 7th, uh, PAL will hold a cheer competition at 11 a.m. at Cass Technical High School. And then as far as uh, one of the commitments or the charge given from this body was that our command officers be visible, be engaging and talk with the constituents in their district slash precincts. Uh, the 10th precinct held its monthly coffee with the cop this past Tuesday, and the 5th precinct held its community meeting uh, this past Wednesday as well. Uh, lastly, there were some action items. Uh, uh, requested from this body or a member of this body at uh, the last meeting and would just like to provide an update on it. Uh, Commissioner Burton had requested information on data sharing agreements with other agencies and the department's uh, recovery process for missing persons. Um, data sharing agreements were already provided uh, to this body. Uh, it was done during the time I actually provided them uh, during uh, our freeway camera. Um, uh, efforts when we were going through the procurement process with that so this board already has those documents so if there's something missing or um, it, uh, we can certainly add them but but they have been provided to the board already and then when a person is uh, reported missing these are the following steps used to <coughs> excuse me uh, our recovery process 
We first searched the premises uh, where they were last seen. Um, anywhere the size of the missing person could be concealed. Um, sometimes with small children, they could be hiding in a closet or under a bed. So uh, literally leave no drawer unopened. Um, just to make sure uh, that we've done a thorough check of the origin uh, of the missing. That would also include yards, cars, uh, vacant nearby homes, lots, uh, and again, any rooms uh, inside the recently cleaned uh, where we may smell an odor of strong bleach or chemical smells or any disturbed yard or ground, <coughs> excuse me, on that property or curtilage just because we know what the possibilities are. So that, that is uh, a, uh, one of our, 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 our steps, one of our first steps on when we address any missing. The next step is the missing is then searched for using uh, multiple law enforcement databases to see if there has been contact with an outside agency. Sometimes someone may be perhaps, uh, may have been, been an accident, perhaps, <coughs> excuse me, they may be in custody. Um, and that is why they've been reported missing because they have not been in contact with their loved ones. Uh, this would also include a search of their vehicle um, and their vehicle information. Um, we also check with the hospitals and the morgues to see if perhaps we have any someone by that name or perhaps uh, John or Jane Doe uh, that they currently uh, have uh, in their possession to see if this is perhaps the missing person. Yeah, we talked about that canvas area, but then we would transition to digital <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, for digital evidence. Uh, residential cameras, neighborhoods interviewed, cameras of businesses at the nearest main roads. Um, uh, confirmation, thank you. Uh, confirmation that uh, the missing has attended work or school. Uh, so we will utilize that. Obviously reaching out to relatives and friends, social media to see if there's many in any activity on their accounts then. Um, if they have bank, uh, their bank cards uh, their, or their financial instruments, whether it's a bank card, a bridge card, a social security card, uh, we're checking to see if there had been any activity on that as well. Um, then our, our lane or NCIC uh, to include, we put that message out uh, that, again, this person is missing. Certainly after our efforts are to locate them and, and find them. If we're not, then we're putting this out to other law enforcement agencies in the region through this national database to just put this so if anyone comes in contact uh, with them, we can certainly return them, uh, get them to their loved ones. We have incidents of those that may have mental health issues, perhaps uh, stages of, of physical health or ailments that uh, can affect their, their minds, such as dementia, uh, which they don't know where they are or, or have gotten lost. So putting this information out to our other law enforcement partners, uh, <coughs> again, all in our efforts to uh, return this person to their loved ones. Uh, and then a media release, uh, obviously using our partners in the media as well, uh, <coughs> again, to get this person home. And then once they are reported and missing, uh, once they have been returned or they have been located, then we still go out and visually verify them. If someone is attempting to um, conceal a nefarious act, they may say, oh no, they're home, we're good, you don't have to worry about it. But if we get a call saying that someone has returned home, <coughs> I tried, sorry, one second. <laughs> then we will send our officers out, or if they're in another agency or another state, we will still have that agency physically lay eyes on them for their physical, uh, mental health uh, as well before we uh, <clears throat> remove them from our missing database. <clears throat> that concludes my report, and I will uh, gladly answer any questions this body may have. Thank you for your report. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Through the, um, through the chair. Commissioner Burton. Um, Chief. Um, this data um, sharing agreement that I'm looking at right here uh, is not the data sharing agreement that I um, microphone. The data sharing agreement that I am um, that I just received here, a hand copy here, just set at my desk, uh, is not the data sharing agreement that I uh, initially uh, requested. The data sharing agreement that I requested was uh, was based off of a. Uh, a, a article that was released in Wire uh, pertaining um, um, uh, shot spotter, and so I like to um, reinnovate re what I asked for, uh, just to be crystal clear here today, um, as I have been in previous weeks, is that uh, we, I'm looking for a data sharing agreement with shot spotter with those other c cities. Um, this one here is 
talks about license plate readers. It's not what I um, ask for. And I do see the cities here, but I'm looking for the one for data sharing agreement pertaining to ShotSpotter based off of a, a article that was released in The Wire. Uh, we're talking about microphone sensors that's uh, s uh, sensible enough to pick up co uh, conversations from this ground level up. Um, we also know that ShotSpotter has a multi-million dollar lawsuit um, Excuse me, Commissioner. Excuse me. Point of order and for point of information. Excuse me, Commissioner. Point of order. I, Excuse I, me, Commissioner. I, I, you asked for information that they gave you. You're no, point of, nothing point to of do order. about uh, point article. Of order. These are none of the, the things that you point gave of order. me for. Point of order. Um, I've been raising a lot of these concerns way before um, Commissioner, some of you point? arrived on the board. But point of order and chief um, there is madam a chair what did madam chair the point of order has been raised you need to rule on whether the point of order is well taken or not if you rule that the point of order is well taken he needs, first of all, the commissioner needs to state what rule has been violated. So when you raise a point of order, you need to say, this rule has been violated. After that, then you would rule on whether or not the point of order is well taken or not. So the commissioner needs to tell you, what is his point of order? What rule has been violated? That's what point of order means. There's been a, a, um, a violation of a rule, a law, a policy, or a parliamentary rule. Thank you, ma'am. Commissioner Burton, your point, what are, what are you trying to say? Through the, through, the, um, through the chair and fellow commissioners and listening audience, um, I, what, I'm, what I'm raising here is that I, re I requested something on the behalf of uh, residents, um, the city of Detroit residents for weeks now, for, for over 10 weeks approximately. And, um, and more like eight weeks pertaining to um, this article that was released in The Wire. But I also asked for other specifics, like how many you know, lawsuits you know, um, that are pending. And um, um, in the total of those lawsuits, we see where in Ch Chicago, shot spotter misidentified Michael Williams Okay, we're um, listen. Point of order is still on a no, subject no. Of, we're not getting ready to talk about Chicago because we're talking uh, about Detroit. We're not getting Dayton ready to agreement. do this. It's it's all part of this whole conversation. It's a point of order. And please, they gave you your information. Please have respect. I'm the I'm a I'm a senior statesman on this board, and I'm the top vote getter on this board. Please have some respect, and please have some class. Excuse please. me, sir. Madam oh. Chair, when you raise the point of order, you have to state what rule. Is being violated. It seems to me from listening, the commissioner is saying that he has requested information he's not received. Thank you. That does not rise to a point of order. So there is no pending valid point of order. There is. I no believe, Madam Chair, what you may be trying to get to is this is a point for asking questions, and it appears that the commissioner is engaged in a platform statement. And those two need to be separated. Thank you, ma'am. There is no platform here. This is uh, questions um, to be point asked. of order and for point of information. I raise, I raise information on the behalf of the citizens of Detroit, on the behalf of those that wake up every day in poverty that doesn't have the resources for a good legal defense. We see in Chicago where misidentify a black man who served a print a print uh, a prison sentence and that was later exonerated for a crime he didn't then, commit. And Adam his name Chair, is Michael at Williams. This point, we need to allow the um, deputy chief to respond. Yep. Thank you. If, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, <clears throat> with the specif specificity uh, mentioned at this point, if those, that request can be put in writing, uh, we will respond uh, accordingly to the commissioner's uh, request.
through the chair. Chief, Thank you, you have you, you top heavy back there. Majority of the audience back there is is law uh, enforcement. Commissioner, this, you are out of order. That I, as usual, you are out of order. You were asked to ask the question. Point of, to point of order. Deputy my Chief, my is request no is, order. is in order because I raised it on the behalf of the citizens of Detroit and I raised it approximately 10 weeks ago. And, and I have like given that information. You information. This is not there. They have given you your information. I don't know why you like to get up here and show out every time. I'm not getting ready to go back in point with point of order. Point of order. Move on to the next commissioner, Madam Chair. Thank you, ma'am. So we're now moving on, Ms. Underwood, to oral communications. Thank you. Do we have uh, any do the commissioners? You need to ask whether the commissioners have questions. No, do, excuse me. Okay. Well, I asked, does any other commissioners have any questions? There are no questions. Moving forward, please, Ms. Underwood, can you please move on to oral communications? Yes, Madam Chair. Our next speaker will be Minister Eric Blunt, Chris Gilmer Hill, and Ms. Bernice Smith. Good afternoon, board. I'm Minister Eric Blunt from Sacred Heart Catholic Church here in Detroit. The corruption in this space borders on a cult. Because each of you know that the main focus and the critical work of this board is police officer misconduct. But you let the chief's office just ramble on about crime and incidences of crime and crime statistics. So you just avoid it, but it's, it's got to be intentional. You know what you're doing. You are smart people. So the stuff you put up with, with Commissioner Burton, I don't, in many ways, I have trouble with him, but in many ways, I don't blame him. I'd go crazy, too, if I had to sit here and listen to crime statistics when we are here for police officer misconduct. And there's more than enough evidence to show that police officer misconduct is rampant in this police department. We can tell by the lawsuits. We can tell by the number of citizens that are falsely arrested. We can tell by the number of citizens that are falsely imprisoned. But no. Uh, Commissioner Bell, we're glad to see you back. Whatever facts and information come out, we all need to know it in its entirety. Speaking of facts, anyone under the sound of my voice, especially those in the investigative realm, the um, Auditor General and Inspector General, if you need to know specifics, I will tell you. The things I have talked about Commissioner Bernard doing as being very, very wrong is from the transcripts of March the 2nd, 2023, page 37, starting at line 9, but I'll start at line 16. And I quote Commissioner Bernard, you ladies and gentlemen, those are the people she just promoted. I am Attorney Linda Bernard. If there's anything I can do for you as a that lawyer, time, or personal, or professional, please feel free to contact me. I'd like to respond, if I may, just quickly, Madam Chairperson. Uh, Minister Blunt has come to these meetings for more than two years now, indicating that he is a man of Christian faith. Yet, in the past three years or so that I've been here and listened to him, he has consistently and hatefully come to this meeting, most weeks to personally attack me rather than address any of the issues of the day or on the day's agenda. You must uh, stop attacking me, Minister Blunt. I've told you this before. You are acting like a petulant child. We all know that you want to be on the board, of, of the police, of police commissioners. We also know you have proven that you are and that you do not possess the character, temperament, or civility to sit here as a representative of our community or anyone other than yourself. So please stop. Um, let the record show that Commissioner Darrell Woods is now present. Thank you, Ms. Underwood. Any more? Oral communications. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Gilmer Hill. I'm a lifelong resident of the second district. 
Thank uh, you. First and foremost, I am here to support Commissioner Burden and ask the rest of this board, please take action on the ceasefire resolution that has been brought before you time and time again. I'm aware that the leadership of this board has consistently failed to provide it to you, to put it on the agenda, et cetera. At this point, that is not an excuse. You all know about this resolution, and you all know about the vital importance of passing this and ensuring that the technology being tested on civilians on the streets of Gaza does not wind up here at home. We, there was just an article released by an Israeli technology reporter showing that the technology being developed in Gaza not only is being created by these like, startups in preparation for sale internationally, the technology is truly evil. There was a program called Daddy's Home that the Israeli military uses to target the homes of Palestinians and try to find the times when these like men are at home with their families with the specific intent of bombing them at home and not just while they're out uh, doing any sort of military operation. That is evil. That is genocide. And Commissioner Burton has consistently brought a resolution. I would thank him and Commissioner Bernard for their efforts to bring this forward. The rest of you need to do something. I'd also like to address the conduct of this board's leadership during this meeting. Uh, to be blunt, the conduct of the acting vice chair is an embarrassment to my city. We are going to talk about Chicago. We are going to talk about Gaza. We are going to talk about human rights and civil liberties for the people of Detroit. And we are not going to stop until we achieve justice everywhere. I would thank Commissioner Burton. The repeated and unjustified interruption of his questions to the chief absolutely do rise to a point of order. The department has not provided the specifically requested information about shot spotter, and we should keep asking for it until they do so. Thank you. And thank you, sir. In response, when this honorable board has been presented with the same resolution that was submitted by city council, then we'll review it. Until then, we won't. Point of Not order. Anything point of order. that will be point of order. added Point of or order. subtracted of what they presented. Point of order. I have, Sorry. I'd like to make a motion at this time that we remove the, chair, the chairperson because her statement is definitely out of order. Uh, do I have a second from any colleagues? I have a, I'm making a motion that we remove the chairperson for today's meeting. The, 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 the commissioner must first be recognized, Madam Chair, or he can make a motion. Through the chair, through the chair. As a, someone that's sitting in as a chairperson, owe the public apology. You owe this man uh, a sincere apology. M Madam Chair, this, be, the statement that was Madam made Chair, to him Madam Chair, be recognized. was out of order. That was out of order. Uh, and therefore, I'd like to make a motion Woods, this time recognized. that we remove the chairperson at today's meeting. Uh, um, uh, thank you for recognizing me. Uh, we are here for the uh, citizens of the city of Detroit. We're not here for any slideshows. We're not here for anything but for the people of the city of Detroit. Hmm. Our city needs our help and they need our leadership. And so I, I encourage all commissioners to stay focused on the agenda at hand, which is making sure that all of the needs of the cities are, is being met. You know, um, so let, I'm, I'm asking you guys to, you mm -hmm. know, to lower the temperature mm -hmm. and let's focus, because this is the time for citizens to be able to <clears throat> uh, speak. And I think we should uh, hear from all citizens and we need to debate some things. That's one thing. Uh, so please, let's move on. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Madam Chair, if, if I just may quickly. Yes, ma'am. Um, the gentleman that just spoke, I think we were all listening intently to you and, of course, to, to Commissioner Burton as well. I, we, I think we can, or the chair can make a decision, but she can at this meeting in order to put 
together perhaps a subcommittee to address your concerns regarding the ceasefire. The, the resolution doesn't have to be exactly like city councils. Ours could be bigger or less because we're an independent body. But I, I understand that you want us to address this as a priority. I think our chairperson recognizes it well because it's, it's, a, it's a matter of life and death for a lot of people. And it's, it's important that, that, us, that we as a body weigh in on this issue about what's happening with the war. So we can do that if you, if, with your permission, and we can meet and come up with something for you, if that's OK. Yeah. And Madam Chair, may I be recognized? Hmm. Go, ahead, go uh, right ahead. Yes, uh, and when you looking at all of this, it, this is not a pure uh, ceasefire resolution. Um, we need, if for us to look at a, a resolution, it has to, um, you know, be a resolution like everybody around the country has done. And then also, when you want to look at some things, I'm thinking about the black children in Haiti as well, mm. that's suffering and dying over there. Mm -hmm. Who going to give a revolution, resolution for them? Thank you. Who's going to give a resolution for the children in Africa and throughout the di diaspora? It's not the same. You know, so this is, uh, this, is, this is not to go tit for tat, but there's a lot of suffering going on around the world. The and uh, my heart bleeds for the people of Haiti. My heart bleeds for the people in Israel as well in Gaza. You know, but these ceremonial uh, resolutions does nothing to stop the, the hatred or the violence that's going on in the city of Detroit. I'm happy to do a, a pure resolution and support a resolution that don't have politics attached to it. Mm -hmm. We're not here to play politics. We're here to do something meaningful and significant uh, for the citizens of the city of Detroit, first and foremost. But if we also we want to pass resolutions, um, let's do one that's going to be uh, uh, not because if you want to talk about technology, uh, you, a cell phone is technology, a MacBook is a technology. You know, you got all types of uh, technology issues, and so we can't just be willy nilly about this. You know, let's do this with uh, pure hearts and pure intention. And I, I, I'll stop pontificating. <laughs> Madam Chair, you have this you can, elderly lady who's been standing there, and I'm concerned. One, se one second, please. I don't mind. Go ahead, Miss Smith. Excuse me, um, uh, Madam Palin, uh, you know, you know, this is the Board of Police Commission, and she's a chair uh, person, and we are the commissioners here, and we can run this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Woods. Hmm. You're the chair. I have Ms. Smith. Ms. Smith, can you go ahead, please? I'm sorry. You for, know, your, for your waiting. Thank you for your patience. Good evening for everybody. I didn't come last week because I was still upset with the commissioner lying on me about my cane. I have never, and God knows, I have never hit anybody with my cane, let alone him. So I want to let the commissioner know and the public know he lied on me. I went to my attorney to talk about it, and he said it's not worth it. So I just want to let you know, because I was ready to fight him all the way to the end. Now, my thing is this. I was raised by a mother who didn't allow no disrespect in her home whatsoever. And I did the same with my five children. I got five, five children, five grandchildren, and five great-grand. And they're all decent, respectful children. I have one that just retired from Ford for after 39 years. Another one is PNC with the bank executive. I got a postmaster daughter in the suburbs. And I got another son retired from Cadillac two years ago. So I have raised my children. And then I got grandchildren. One's a doctor out of uh, Michigan State she graduated from. And I got one from Alabama, which is an engineer that don't want to come to back to Detroit. She loves down there. Then I got another one that's a caterer. So don't dare embarrass me before the public and tell me that I'm hitting somebody with the cane. If I got to do that, then I don't need to come here every week. You need to take care of your problems that you have here. And that problem is your commissioner over there. He's dis disgusting, he's dishonorable, and he doesn't care what he says to nobody here. Then you got a minister, as you stated, don't respect nobody. This is a city that we got to respect each other. Besides, stop killing each other and try and make amends to get along with somebody. 
My son has us over to his house every Sunday, for, and it's 10 of us. And believe me, we get along. We don't drink and act a fool or anything. We get along with each other. And we talk about this police commission. Thank you. That is up. your time. Thank Take you. care, and God bless everybody. Thank you. God bless you. The next three speakers will be Miss Alina Herrera, Russ Ballant, and Michelle George. Good afternoon, Honorable Commission. Thank you for allowing us to speak. I would like to lend support to the resolution for ceasefire in Gaza, immediate and permanent ceasefire, and also support the disinvestment of surveillance by Israeli technology. I ask you to really truly consider the human rights violations that are going on and the amount of money that the portfolios of major municipalities, particularly police departments, are putting into it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't think I need my full two minutes, but I, I want to uh, restate what a little, a little differently what I said at the last meeting concerning uh, technology companies that are involved in uh, uh, gathering data that gets used in ways that are uh, in gross violations and murderous violations of human rights. I gave an example from right from Detroit when IBM organized all the data uh, on a contract with the Nazi party in 1933 when Hitler came to power. They organized all the data for the Holocaust, put all the data together, and they knew who, who it was. The whole book has been written based on U.S. government documents and others that talks about how that was done. They even organized the railroad lines that ran into the death camps. We can't assume because somebody has a reputable name that they're acting reputably. When we saw those food delivery workers, which the White House has just called out and called for a ceasefire, because of the killing of those workers, that was data was collected through surveillance intelligence gathering. The technology companies don't pull the trigger. They create the targets for the people who do pull the trigger. And if they are doing business in Israel, it's in connection with the war and the systematic w genocide that's going on today. If they're doing business there, they should not be, doing, be given any business. There needs to be accountability in the marketplace. There needs to be accountability in the world. And we can't honor them with a contract or doing any kind of business that ignores the role they're playing today. And that is your time. Thank you. To the chair. Go ahead, sir. While the next um, speaker comes up, I, I just want to just say that um, this genocide um, that's, that's happening right now in, over in Gaza is wrong. And uh, many families across the country are in pain. And also um, the surveillance peace that's over in Gaza is, is, is also wrong. Can't understand you. And it's unconstitutional. And, you know, and anyone, you know, who has um, a heart should want to do the right thing by adopting a ceasefire surveillance uh, resolution from this, from this board. Um, because it's the right thing to do. And we all should say, free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. Thank you. Go ahead, please. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, to this honorable board, uh, Deputy Chief Hayes. Um, I want to just make a comment. I know it's been a lot of tension among this board. 
Um, and I'm hope, hopefully, because I did apply as a police commissioner, but hopefully you all can get yourselves together with conflict, because we know throughout the years I've been coming to the meetings, there's never been conflict. But I just hope when we were, in, when I was in D.C. a month ago, they were talking about <coughs> oversight and police boards. It's not making it a bad thing. It is to investigate citizens' complaints. It's nothing against the police. I do want to congratulate the woman of excellence that won award at the Michigan Chronicle the other week, last week. But it's all about just getting together, just like uh, Commissioner Wood stated. Now, I'm here to talk about the children. Um, and I do want to thank the uh, chair. I thought that you were looking for with the 13-year-old. But we have a lot of missing children that have, I mean, twins. Even if the child runs away, um, and Deputy, um, Deputy Chief Hayes, if you could take this note for Chief White, I'm going to send out an email. And I'm going to send out an email to all of the Board of Police Commissioners of all of the children that have been missing in the last three months. Even if the child has ran away, we have to report that. It's been the 16-year-old. There are children walking in the ED. We understand a lot of runaway children, 10 and 11 years old. But what we need to do, we need to find these missing children because that 13-year-old, when we get so lax, I'm talking about lax as a city, when we get so lax to not to find these children, then we have somebody like the 13-year-old that's missing that was at the bus stop that Detroit DPS was slowly to uh, the school system to report on. So what we're going to do as citizens, we're going to put it in our hand. We're going to get this across the country. we got to find these missing children. If they are runaway, report it. I will write the mayor. I'll get to the mayor because I got to do a proposal for him for a mental health hospital. I'll get to the mayor, but we have to report the missing children that are occurring in this city. I'll be in New York next week. They will be discussing it. So that's why I want us to get on it with doing that. Thank you very that's much. That's your time. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, the next speaker will be Ronald Foster. And after Mr. Foster, Lieutenant Mark Young. And then we'll go into Zoom. Oh, good evening. <clears throat> Through the chair. Um, the first thing, I just want to come down um, this evening and just remind our community as a whole, um, this is Sexual Awareness Month. That's the first thing. I know a lot of our children come here, and the youth panel has spoken up, and that's one of the things that they wanted to be included in weekly reports with sexual assaults within this city. Um, the impact of it. It is so significant, I only have two minutes. I cannot describe how those crimes affect our communities. Lack of response or closures. And so just moving forward, um, Sexual Awareness Month, Human Trafficking. And I bring these things up because we have an NFL draft coming here. The way we conduct ourselves is not going to be just seen here in this city, but we need to start conducting ourselves in a more fashionable manner for this nation to see. This is, and, and that's really where we have to have more cohesiveness in, um, in whatever we do. Now, whether we spiritual or not, I know the Bible where it says that God is not the author of confusion. And so if it's anything that's confusion where one can humble themselves to um, get rid of confusion, then it is not of God. And so I'm not God and I'm not judging anybody, but I'm making that the word very clear. And one thing he said is my word will not come back void. Okay, and so I could preach and, and, and with the best of them. But it ain't just about preaching. It's about having the best of them walking with you while you preaching. It's about having the best of them teaching with you while you preaching. As long as you got your own funky attitudes, you won't be in a position to teach nobody anything. And so we all have um, a lot of crime over the weekends. We have to focus more on being a collective city as a whole and That's find right. out how to address resolutions as opposed to arguments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Much respect to you, Madam Chair. Thank um, you. Past, present, and future, I've lived here all my life, and I've never been more prouder to be a member of the Detroit Police Department or a citizen of this city. See, because I saw it. I watched it. Excuse me, could you say your name, please? Lieutenant Mark Young. Thank you. I've never been prouder of my city. We just had company and we about to get company again, but it's not about the company that we're getting. It's about what these men and women do out of the day. 
I asked the board as calmly as I can today, because I could be just as angry as everybody else. Don't compare my department to other cities, because you have no idea. Other cities are looking at our department right now and praising us. Other cities are looking at our city right now and praising us. That's true. I, re I remember the days of rubble. I remember the days where we had to block off part of Woodward to, sh to, ha to shame ourselves from the embarrassment of the blight. As I drove by the train station today, I had tears in my eyes seeing from rubble to greatness. Don't compare my department in my city to nobody else. Injustice. Some individuals was passing out flyers and injustice to the, member, the men and women of the Detroit Police Department who give their heart, souls, and sacrifice for the city. If you ain't never been in their shoes, don't, don't even judge them, don't discuss them, because they deal with more than what you know. What you see on TV, they live it. Nightmares. Wingspan. Wingspan. If you know anything about leadership, leadership is wingspan. It's what you could reach out, what you could grab, what you could touch. My heart goes out to the people of Israel, Gaza, Africa, all around this world. But right now, my concern is the people of the city of Detroit, which I'm willing, my colleagues are willing to give and risk their life for. Let's stay focused. That's what our mission is. Our city came from rubble and is coming to greatness. Let's stay focused on that. Thank you. Madam Chair, we have five speakers in Zoom. Our first speaker will be Malik Shabazz. Oh, great. The next would be one of the coldest. This, and the third one would be Marguerite Maddox. Mr. Shabazz? Yes. Thank you. I'll give an honor to God, to this honorable body, mm -hmm. and to everyone who is um, watching through Zoom or whatnot. I want to pick up on uh, what the lieutenant was just saying. Uh, I think we have the finest police department in the country. Wasn't always that way, but I think that's where we are now. And the police have worked with the community and the community has worked with the police to improve, to grow, to be better, to be more responsive. So I just wanna say thank you to all of the Detroit police officers. As far as any bad ones, God will weed them out and uh, and we'll help the Lord uh, <laughs> to weed them out uh, constitutionally. We we'll help them. But uh, this is a constitutional police force that we have. And again, uh, in many ways, we are light year ahead of other municipalities and uh, as far as the abuse and terrorism that uh, uh, our people, black people, are going through across the country. We've turned that road. We, we cut that corner here. We don't have to worry about that here. So thank you all. And a special shout out uh, to my good friend, Linda Bernard. Love you. Love you more. Thank you. One of the coldest. Can everyone hear me clearly? You can be heard. Here in Detroit, here in Detroit we have a very serious problem with elections. Every elected position in the city of Detroit is now highly, highly suspect in question. In question, because we have absentee ballot voter fraud. A case, one case, was demonstrated on the 28th of February, right after the presidential primary election, United States presidential primary election was held. Um, you can view the video on Facebook, Detroit Unity page, or Instagram, Detroit Unity page, or either or X, Detroit Unity page. 
Now, uh, Commissioner Bernard, I heard what Minister Eric, Eric Blunt said, and uh, I believe it was factual what he was stating. Um, for you to say what you said about him, I think that's really highly, highly inappropriate. So that's what I'm going to say to you. Um, Kenesha Coleman, DPD case number 20-11112, you were there. Willie Bell was there. As a Michigan State Police report now been proffered, returned over to the Detroit Police Department last year in 2023 with their findings from a review and investigation of that case number. I'm going to ask you, Linda Bernard, now, since you were there, to make a motion today that that report be presented to the Board of Police Commissioners for their review so you guys can know exactly what I've been saying since 2020. Now, Willie Bell, I don't know what you think you're going to do, but you got to go. You got in the way. It was in the knees way. Now you got to get out of her way. Thank you. Miss Marguerite. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. The next caller with the last three uh, numbers, one, two, four, and then former Commissioner William Davis will be the last speaker. Yes, good afternoon. May I be heard? You can be heard. Okay, thank you. 
I do support the police, but uh, there is some house cleaning that needs to be done or assistance for people to step up their game. I spoke before about a property crime situation that, that escalated, now even worse than when I brought it up before. A neighbor of mine caught a guy stealing off his porch on camera six times and the police didn't do anything about it. Then this gentleman became emboldened and he torched a few houses. He was prosecuted for one or two of them. The neighborhood was concerned. He tried to plead insanity, but he didn't get that. And the neighbor said, you know, he does have issues, but he does know right from wrong. And so he's at Team Wellness. They're going to release him with a tether. People are very upset about it. And then guess what they did? They pushed the city to demolish the family member's house. And then the, the, they demolished the house last week. There were five cop cars there. And um, I heard the news trucks were called. Then I heard helicopters for, from like 12.30 a.m. to 3.30 in the morning. People are still concerned. Now, this is not a house problem, Mike Duggan and all these demo, demo, demo people. We cannot demolish our way out of societal problems. But I do view this as a police bill because had there been earlier intervention, as there had been, then perhaps a number of people wouldn't have had their houses torched. And uh, this lady wouldn't be getting a $45,000, I heard, demolition bill. And, you know, I'm sure that, the, the, and so, yes, this is an intersection of mental health. But, uh, again, I believe had the police intervened, if they would take property crime seriously. And I got a situation, a member of Burton, they still are, are not helping me out on that situation about the people that ripped me off. The investigator doesn't seem to want to help, told me stuff that Michigan State Police and other DPD officers told me is not true. So, you know, if all these higher income earners that Mike Duggan's so happy about. Uh, 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 so, excuse me, DC Hayes, is it possible that we can look into this caller, her complaint? Yes, look forward. Along with OCI. Through the, and along with through the chair. Permission. Right. Um, through the chair. I, I actually. Uh, um, I actually agree that OCI office uh, is very capable of looking into this. Um, I'm not sure have they have they had opportunity to look into this. I'm not sure if it's been brought to them yet, but I do know that um, this is a District Five resident. This is one of my constituents, and they come before this board uh, often about many of their concerns about the police and their behavior and how, and how the police enter, you know, you know, in, in, all in, in the community. But they also bring other concerns. They support the police on one end, but when the police are wrong, they share this in the board meeting. It'd be nice if, um, if the department can look into this as well, but also since they brought their concerns to the board, that OCI uh, get opportunity uh, to reach out to um, this person um, and, uh, and 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 um, and 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 get their full story and 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 and, and begin to work on that because um, you know you know we still have 700 cases that's confiscated by the city inspector general and uh, and there and there can be others uh, voices that's unheard of too. Uh, that can go unheard of, and we need to really uh, listen to um, Detroiters when they come into these meetings. They express their concerns, they, yeah, and uh, and we, you know, we understand that they they in pain uh, and that they want answers. And this board right here is is very very capable of helping them get closure and and. Um, um, and I know that the chief investigator has um, a hardworking team. I know he's, you know, um, very hard on the job. Um, and, I'm, and I'm not sure if this case uh, has arrived to him since he's been there. But the department have heard these concerns from a District 5 resident over and over and over. And I like to hear from the department on how are you going to help this District 5 resident get closure because she's bringing her concerns week after week and then she may um, skip some weeks but she always bring the same concern. Thank you, Commissioner. We're going to move forward to have OCI, Warfield. Thank you, sir. 
And are there any more? Our final speaker is former Commissioner William Davis. Please go ahead, Mr. Thank you. Commissioner Davis. Hello, can I be heard? You can be heard, go ahead, please. Okay, I'd like to start off by saying that uh, I also strongly believe that the, this board should do a ceasefire resolution. Uh, that, that's like what uh, the president is also calling for an immediate ceasefire. What makes it even more egregious about this, because I'm a, a all around activist, is the fact that our dollars, our, our, our defense department is sending stuff over that is killing women and children. You know, I'm a Christian. I know you, some of y'all may not believe in God, but I think this is just morally wrong. And our dollars is helping to kill thousands of people, women and children, and aid workers. This is unconscionable. And, you know, if anybody in good conscience should recognize this and be willing to stand up for it. Also, as it relates to uh, Ms. Smith talking about Mr. B Commissioner Burton, I was at the meeting when she did swing her cane and almost hit Commissioner Burton and, uh, and Commissioner Brown and former Command, uh, from former Deputy Chief Ty Bettison, who's now Deputy Mayor. And also at that time, you know, the, they asked Commissioner Burton, he was asked whether or not he wanted to press charges on her. Perhaps he should have, then perhaps she wouldn't be making so many comments and acting the way she does sometimes. But, you know, she did attack him in a meeting. And, you know, and no one's supposed to publicly attack a public official. That did happen. I am a witness to that. Also, I believe this board, this board uh, should, um, budget should go up and the staffing for investigators should go up when uh, a major number of police officers are added to the force and it's when they get different tasks and different responsibilities, you know, like the ones that's going to be uh, working with DOT now. Uh, so more complaints are going to go up. We need more investigators. Thank you. Thank you. We will now move forward to our presentation to the board. Madam Chair, I think I raised my hand. Oh, I'm up. sorry, I'm sorry, sir. Commissioner Bell. Commissioner, thank you, ma'am. I just want to respond to C. Swire. I'm support, I support it, but this is not the proper form. The chair of state is not the proper form for us to take a political issue. That is not the proper form. So. We just have to, if you need a legal opinion, we need to have that opinion, but that is not the proper form for this body to, to entertain that type of resolution on ceasefire. <laughs> Secondly, an IEG, I mean, IG report came up. I had talked to Corporation Council Mallet, and this body needed to entertain for him to come to this body, even publicly or in closed session, to discuss that matter because they have the opportunity to make a decision as the prosecutor and as the Supreme Court, and you have no challenge to that. But I think this board need to be in, uh, enlightened in terms of what actually with that report, 38 pages, and there was no reprimand of anybody on that indictment, so-called, but we was encouraged to be retrained. And as we all know, we never been trained in reference to that is the key point and so out of that, they came out retraining for myself you know, and Commissioner Carter. But there has been no training of this board since I've been on the board since 2014, simply put. So I put this to rest. We need to bring it out and deal with it because I think in three or four weeks, you haven't even talked about it. But you took action against myself and Commissioner Carter without any input, without any dialogue. But this board has a history of engaging that type of conduct. So we need to end that process. We need to be fair to the public, also to commissioners. We give more rate to the police department than we do for our own body. And I think I've been an honorable member of this board quite some time, but I am continuing to be embarrassed of how we conduct our business in terms of the whole process. I want to state it, especially for you, Commissioner, because you have no idea what has transpired over the years. But you need to enlighten yourself to get some background, some facts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'll, well, wait, I'll wait to new business. I'll, I'll go ahead. Move the agenda. Okay. So we're moving forward to the board presentation from Mr. Freeze. Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Freeze. Commissioners of the board. 
come to you today to present the budget actuals for February for the Board of Police Commissioners. I'm going to pause. I just want to make sure I can see it up on the screen for the public. Awesome. If we can go to the next slide. And one more. For the month of February, the budget actualized at $226,000 and 37, compared to the February budget of $291,332. This represents um, an actualization of 78%. We have a surplus of $65,000, 295. The ra rationale here is that the BOPC team still has some vacancies and also still the Merrill Poissons construction not being uh, completed and the, the rent not being able to be paid. Turning the page here, as we look to fill these vacancies, we have just posted six BOPC investigators. The Secretary of the Board interviews are to be set for April 18th. The Executive Manager of Policy, this is in the process of being posted, and the attorney is currently on hold. Go to the next page. Go to the next page. I think we're just going to look at the last page. What has been most relevant for my role is the submission and budget hearing of the fiscal 2024 through 2025 budget. Um, our, our hearing for this budget took place Monday, March 25th at 2.30 p.m., uh, led by Chairman Presley. Um, and since we have been fielding inquiries by council members, specifically council member Calloway, council member Johnson, and council president Sheffield. So big thanks to the BOPC staff, the chairman and the commissioners uh, for the background here to, to field these inquiries. Um, going into next year, the spirit of our BOPC budget is to increase. Um, we submitted a significant increase. The, the mayor, has proposed a significant increase for the Board of Police Commissioners, and that is really to increase the headcount of the OCI team. So former Commissioner uh, William Davies uh, spoke on that, and that is exactly what's happening as we move into the next year is to increase the, the size of the OCI team as well as make their work more effective and more efficient, giving them a new case management system. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions in regards to the budget for many commissioners? To the chair. Um, Go ahead. Um, a question for uh, our fiscal manager, uh, Mr. Uh, Drew Fees. Um, and also, I guess this question can also go to the, um, our chief and investigator. Um, um, first, um, I will go to the um, chief investigator and then to Mr. Jufis, but it's really the same question. Um, just worded slightly different. Uh, chief investigator uh, Warfield, um, if looking at your manpower right now over at OCI, um, what do you what would you like to be staffed at as far as manpower, as far as working on um, um, citizens' complaints? Backlog has has been uh, ongoing issue uh, for you know for years prior to your arrival, but you're the right man to turn things around, and I know you have done um, your homework as far as assessment or where you like to be. I like to see your office, and uh, and you know, and I'm you know we all um, happy that you you know are on the job because you know anybody can turn it around, you can. But question is, where would you like to be? It's like we budgeted for investigators at one one level, but where would you like to take that number up where, you, where we'd be able could, to focus on a backlog as well as any uh, new occurrent uh, cases that could be arriving um, at OCI? 
Through the chair, uh, and thank you for the question. It is my assessment as we look at the number of CCRs that are continuing to come into the office and they're tracking around the same pace that they did last year. And last year was a historic number for us. We are looking at to get at a level that well, I, I would believe would level set us to handle all the complaints that's coming into the office plus the, the backlog cases that we still have there. Idealistically, we need 25 investigators. We need five senior investigators. We need four supervising investigators. We need an additional administrative assistant uh, to handle the cases, to handle the processing of those cases that are coming in as well. So those are the staffing levels that I believe we need. In addition to this, and this is not something we've discussed, but I am in 100% favor of us exploring a deputy position uh, for the Office of the Chief Investigator um, because when a chief investigator comes to this position, there has to be um, some significant um, transference of skills and knowledge um, because the person coming in from the outside not knowing this organization will be completely lost and a deputy will give the will give the foundational support that that office needs even when the chair or the chief investigator seat changes uh, individuals and hopefully in the future that's a discussion that we can have moving forward in the future but immediately we believe that 25 investigators five seniors three I'm sorry, four supervising investigators and uh, another person added to our administrative staff uh, would suffice. Through the chair, um, now I'd like to take that question and move it over to our fiscal manager. Um, Mr. Drew Fees, um, thank you for um, for a great report that you always provide to this, to this um, board and also to our listening audience. Um, listening to uh, our chief investigator uh, mention 25 investigators where you like to see, um, and he also mentioned um, um, four, is it four senior? Five senior and four super, okay. And so we're looking at 34 individuals. 35. 34 m minus the, the deputy. Uh, position. So uh, I'm looking at the, the investigators' positions for now. Um, um, and thank you to Commissioner Bernard. Um, what What do you What do, where, where would this? Can you um, Can you look into those numbers for at a later time um, to see where those numbers would be and and see how we can work that with the City Council. Because I think that's the level we all want to be on, where we can, we can, where, where we can operate uh, in a capacity where we get in these complaints, um, you know, um, worked on within 60 days, which is the charter says. But then, then there's another 30 days there, which is 90 days. But I believe with corporate, um, with uh, um, Chief um, Warfield, um, what he just mentioned, that 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 would raise the expectation of this board to where we should want to be, if, you know, going for thinking of the future. And we didn't have that um, report um, a few years ago when we asked, the, the question was raised at the table. And so I'm, I'm glad that you were able to, um, Chief Warfield was able to, um, you know, you know, step in and, and get the work right away and, and make that assessment. And so we need, we need to be where Chief Warfield just mentioned at 34, 35 individuals over there. Uh, I do have, a concern about the deputy because the deputy positions was something that's um, been striked down by this board a, 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 a couple of times, a couple of different times. But what if it was a, a, a chief of staff um, um, person, um, um, Chief Warfield, as the 35th person? Through the chair, um, I don't want to necessarily get into the semantics yes. of the title of the position. However, there needs to be um, 
a staff person there of senior level that is able to provide continuity uh, in between um, changes in within the chief investigator. I won't be there forever. <laughs> and when I do leave, <laughs> um, I want to make sure that there's continuity, that the things that have already been accomplished and the path that we're moving in continues because there's a senior level administrator, whether you call them chief of staff, whether you call them deputy. I know in most departments in the city, uh, for instance, if you look at the ombudsman's department, um, they have a deputy and that deputy forms or, or performs that type of duty to make sure that there is continuity of transition uh, uh, for the head position. So you can call it whatever you want to, but I think the continuity of, of transition and moving forward is what's most important. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Drew Fries, uh, um, will, will your office be able to uh, look and see how that will look on the budget and perhaps this budget can go back before council. I don't know what the time frame is to negotiate, you know, raising that even more so we have more investigators over there and have the, the size team that Chief Warfield likes uh, for OCI. Through the chair. Commissioner Byrne, thank you for asking that question. Um, and it's been through the partnership of uh, Secretary Brown uh, Chief Investigator Warfield, those numbers are exactly what we're working on right now. It is a bit of a moving target as we consider that some of these are union negotiated uh, mm -hmm. salaries. Mm -hmm. So we're anticipating these salaries to come up moving into next year. But with this consideration and with these numbers that we've been working very hard on, the, the budget office is absolutely working on that. Thank you. Madam Chairperson. Yes, ma'am. Recognized. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> good report, uh, Drew. Just um, really one qu quick question. Where are we on hi hiring a, a policy administrator for the board? Because I'm losing my mind doing 10 things. Through the chair. It is in the process of being posted. Um, a BOPC staff member, Jasmine, just asked me about this inquiring uh, I think on your behalf, Commissioner Bernard, that um, that the 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 official title is uh, executive manager of policy. It's in the process of being posted, and and through that process, resumes will be collected, interviews will be conducted uh, very soon here. But it, I. I agree. It, it has been too long. The, the role needs to be filled, both on both on the budget standpoint of we need to be spending the dollars that have been budgeted, yep. as well as the work that needs to be done. Thank you. Through the chair, one final question for um, the fiscal manager, Commissioner Burton. Mr. Uh, Mr. Drew Fries, um, do you feel that that um, that your office could use additional? Um, um, staff person, um, were you like an assistant or, or something of that nature? Um, for the through the chair, <laughs> I would say n not at this time. Praise the Lord, Ma Madam Chair. Can I expand on that question? Go ahead. I do believe that the policy division need an extra person. Their work is overwhelming when policies are coming in twofold for one person to handle that. Commissioner Woods. Yeah, um, and it, it's, you will have that posted very soon, right? That will be posted uh, policy through, the, through chair. the chair. I think what uh, Standing Secretary Brown is saying is that on the policy side, currently we have no one. That role needs to be filled, the executive manager of policy. In addition to that, what is not currently budgeted budgeted is an a policy assistant the the amount of work on the budget side i i think is is handled well uh, with one person on the policy side that work it eagerly needs to be worked on and there is almost a backlog of policy work that has been built up and so i, I don't want to speak for him but what secretary brown is saying is that i think there does need to be assistant on the executive manager of policy side <clears throat> so you're saying you need two people on the policy side on yes. the policy side and, and are we budgeted for that 
to the chair. Right now we're budgeted for one. Moving into next year, uh, through the negotiations that are happening right now with, with the city council, um, we are hoping to get another position budgeted. So that's something, future, that's something futuristic. All right, so right now, uh, uh, far as it relates to the policy manager, that will be posted v very soon, right? Uh, through the chair, Go ahead. Commissioner, Go right ahead. Commissioner Woods, the position has to go through a process. Okay. It's already been in, put into NeoGov. Okay. There's four people who has to approve it in order for it to get posted. Currently, we are keeping our eye on the approval process. Okay. But as we speak, that position has been put into NeoGov, which is the HR system for the city. Mm -hmm. Could, okay. Through the chair, could I? Uh, yes. Uh, in, okay. in in regards to the to the policy manager position, I've yet to come forth with a motion on that one. But um, the I Advantage firm that's supporting with the board secretary vacancy is also willing and prepared to support with filling the vacancy of the policy manager as well. So we'll, we can entertain that, or we can post. But I'm I'm not prepared to make any kind of motion right now on that. There there are additional details that need to happen as well. So I'm just putting that out there for awareness more than anything else. Okay, through through the chair, Commissioner Woods. Yeah, I um, you know, I would like to see that happen. Uh, sooner than later and then also um, as it relates to you know going to a search firm for that particular position mm -hmm. I, I don't think I'll be in favor of that uh, and uh, and I believe that we can post that position just like we post all other positions so that we can be able to take a look at uh, these resumes to, to the chair Commissioner Burton Qu question for um Mr. Robert Brown, Mr. Robert Brown, is the is the the board attorney is 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 present today? No, she's on vacation. She's on vacation. Okay, um, through through the, through the chair, um, you know this board is 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 uh, desperately in need of uh, of an attorney. Uh, we need someone who's going to, um, you know, is, is going to really care about um, this board, but also care about. The residents of Detroit, um, Detroiters um, that you know that comes to the board. There's often times over the years that this board has needed a, a immediate um, opinion or in something, and with not having a, a board attorney present at every meeting, um, it, it really set the board back. Uh, further behind when it far as in regards to getting a, a, a immediate opinion on something I, I do recall uh, when a, a, attorney um, Linda Bernard who, who happens to be our fellow commissioner when she, um, and she still happens to be attorney but when she was our attorney to the board Commissioner Bernard she often gave a legal opinion um, uh, you know, um, and, you know, immediately we didn't have to wait for a legal opinion for something in order for the board to to do its business or, you know, or. And so that's a disadvantage that um, that we are in right now compared to like city council or the county commissioners or or other uh, uh, government um, boards and bodies. Um, they in a position where they can get a media, media opinion. We are at a disadvantage, and so I, 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 I like, um, I guess, uh, f uh, make a motion that for for the board to post the legal uh, attorney position um, uh, whenever the uh, the. Uh, I, I do like for that to go before the policy. I mean, not the policy, but the personnel and training. But I, I like to make a motion that we do post that, and and that you know, in that the personnel and training uh, committee, um, you know, review that and 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 um, because we we need an attorney at this time, and so I don't know if any commissioners feel that way or like to to second a, a motion at this time that we post uh, the, the the board attorney's position. So your motion is for the board for the board to post 
the board attorney's position, the attorney to the board, for us to post that position. I'll second it. Any discussion? Is, is there any discussion? I state the motion, madam. I state the motion. Okay. Sorry. It is. So the, so the motion is that you would like to post the yes, secretary I, position. No, not the secretary position. Board attorney. The board, board attorney, attorney. I'm sorry, board attorney position. Yes. And there is a second by me. Is there any discussion? You want to go first? <laughs> well, currently we uh, we have an attorney, yeah. and um, you know that, that we we're not a bank. We don't have we have an attorney, and as long as we have, have an attorney, attorney, you know, so an effective attorney. May I comment, Madam Chair? Go ahead. We have an attorney um, out of the Office of Corporation Counsel. Many times the interests of the board are in opposition to that, quite frankly, of Corporation Counsel. That attorney works for us, quote, part-time, um, and she was only going to be an attorney for nine months. Our, our chairperson would need to be here. He uh, brokered this deal because we hadn't had an attorney for so long, and I believe that that nine months is going to be up pretty shortly. So therefore, it is appropriate for us to advertise for our own full-time attorney, which the board has always had, their own lawyer sitting upstairs in the office who you can go ask questions to, and who has ma whose attendance at board meetings is mandatory. So it's, it, for me, it's a no-brainer. Um, but it's up to the board, of course. Commissioner Bell? We have already discussed this issue in detail about the attorney to the board. And we reached agreement with the Corporation Council that they are the <clears throat> attorney of the record, regardless of what you have opinion from in-house. And so we don't need to revisit that. We have an understanding of that process. May I respond? The chief of police has a legal department that costs $1.4 million a year. His corporation counsel is Mr. Hall. Every major department in the city of Detroit has its own in-house lawyers. We had one traditionally for years. We don't now. All the, the motion was simply for us to have our own in-house attorney like other major, um, if you will, thought leaders and, and, and progressive departments in the city have. That's all. Through the chair, uh, since we're still on discussion. Go ahead, Commissioner Burton. So, um, um, Madam Chair, um, I know you just recently arrived um, to the board, but, um, and I just want to just talk a little bit more about the history, and I would be as concise as possible. Um, the, the board has 50 years of uh, police oversight here in Detroit, the Board of Police Commission has always had its own attorney and house attorney. And since I, I, I arrived here uh, a little over a, de a decade ago on this board, I was the youngest police commissioner in the country. And when I arrived here, we had, we had an attorney. Um, we also, we had uh, Aaliyah Sabri, who happens to be Judge Aaliyah Sabri, was the honorable attorney um, um, to this board. And now she happens to be our honorable judge. Great leader right here from the Board of Police Commissioners. We also had another great leader attorney on the board since I've been here, Jermaine Wyatt. Um, but then we also had another great leader, an attorney, um, who won three cases in the Michigan Supreme Court, um, the first woman to do so, um, to have a master's in law from the University of Pennsylvania, and always giving the board a legal opinion whenever a legal opinion was raised. Now. These individuals are great attorneys um, as far as um, their experiences concerning the board, um, the board's business. Great attorneys that we have always had um, 
the one a decade, a little over a decade that I've been here. The board has always had his own attorney. Um, attorney never was just, just assigned to us. But we want someone who wants to be here, who has a stomach for the job um, to help the board um, move along when it comes to uh, providing a legal opinion. Uh, a legal opinion is something that um, this board ought to rely on, um, um, especially when we have um, closed door hearings, closed door sessions. We should have an attorney that represents this board in those closed door sessions. Commissioners, it's, it's one thing when we take notes, it's another thing when we hear the various conversations and the various arguments but we don't walk out of a closed door session without having a legal opinion from our uh, licensed attorney uh, that can really direct this board and the path that we should go. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. The Chair. Uh, Commissioner Carter. At this time, I think that the um, motion is out of order in that we have an attorney. Uh, there is no vacancy at this time, so we can't post something if there's no vacancy. Um, and there's no pending vacancy. Point of order for point of information with the- Excuse, excuse me, excuse me. So at this time, I'll call for the question if we must take a vote. And Commissioner Hernandez. The, uh, that motion has to be seconded. She made a motion, call for the question. There needs to be a second in order for it to second. be valid. It's not seconded, it's lost for one of a second. It's second. She's okay. Second. It's non debatable motion. So the vote is on for the. The first. motion to call for the question ends debate. It's non debatable. So you don't ask if there's any debate. You go immediately to the vote. Uh, roll call vote. Roll call. For those in favor of calling the question, you're not voting on the motion now. You're voting on the motion to end debate. Call the question. Thank you. Okay, the motion to end the debate. Yes, ma'am. Chairperson, Chairperson Smith? Yes. Commissioner Bernard? Yes. Commissioner Bell? Yes. Commissioner Burton? No, I think. Commissioner Carter? For the end of the debate, madam. Yes. Commissioner Hernandez? Yes. Commissioner Woods? Yes. Madam Chair, there was six yes and one no. So that motion is? We immediately go to the motion, which is to post the position for an attorney. No okay. more debate. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have one more debate. Mm -hmm. No more debate. You're voting on the motion, which was to post the position for the attorney. You can't debate it anymore. Okay. You just adopted a motion to end debate. So we're voting on the motion to post the position, post for, the the attorney. position yes, for the attorney. Yes. All those in favor. All those in favor. Roll call vote, Madam Chair. Roll call, please. All those. Mr. Call. Mr. Brown. It doesn't require a roll call. No, it doesn't. If, but you can certainly do one, Madam Chair, if you feel the outcome may be uncertain. Well, I just requested because the commissioner just That's asked fine. it for a roll call. So to please him, we'll do a roll call. OK. Thank you. Commissioner Smith. Chairperson Smith. No. Chairperson, I mean, Commissioner Bernard. Absolutely, yes. We can Commissioner be Commissioner Bell. No. Commissioner Burton. Yes. Commissioner Carter. No. Commissioner Hernandez. No. Commissioner Woods. No. There was two yes votes and five no votes. Seven, yeah, five no votes. Thank you, so that motion has failed. Madam Chair. Commissioner Bell. I just want to factual that the two great attorneys that he mentioned, Commissioner Burden, we fired both of those great attorneys. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Um, so, so we're moving on, please. Um, 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 
That's inaccurate. That's not totally true. That's not true. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Burton. We're moving he on. He got sued for it and had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. So if, he was, if he was correct, he would have won the lawsuit. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. We're moving forward to Mr. Brown. And through the chair. Your sorry, secretary really cool. report. Attorney Linda Bernard Pardon me. was let one him, of the let, best attorneys. Let him and, go ahead. Let, let him, well, let she him. also could have sued for hundreds of thousands of dollars, but she didn't. Wait. And she and with this board never taken a motion mm -hmm. to have Attorney Linda Bernard. Um, or anybody else. Uh, or anyone else or any re or removed. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burton. Just for point of information. Commissioner. Mr. Brown. So all three of these were great attorneys m for this board. Madam Chair, you have to close out the um, budget report. I'm sorry. Close out. Close out the budget. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Freeze. You were standing there for a very long time. So thank you for your report and thank you for the information. And we're moving forward. Thank you. Oh, Lord. The Brown. Yeah. As Madam, we move forward to your there's report. There's currently several incomings, and I won't go through all of them because of time. But a couple of them. We have uh, two administrative leave without pay that came in today uh, from the chief office along with a, the facial recognition policy that they just submitted as well that was uh, given the presentation last week. And Madam Chair, I'll stop there. Thank you, Mr. Brown. And for so do we have any announcements? Madam Chair, the next BOPC community meeting is Thursday, April 11th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. with the night precinct hosting at I mean, Ford Resource and Engagement Center. That address is 15491 Madeline Street, Detroit, Michigan, 48205. And then the following community, me community meeting, Thursday, May 9th, 2024, 630 p.m., with the eight precinct hosting, and the location is forthcoming. And Madam Chair, monthly committee meetings scheduled for April 2024. Policy Committee meeting, Tuesday, April 16th, 2024 at 5 p.m. Citizen Complaint Committee meeting, Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024 at 5 p.m. And also again, the Policy Committee meeting will be Tuesday, April 30th at 5 p.m. And Madam Chair, all those com committees can be, it's located here at Detroit Public Safety Headquarters and also can be viewed on Zoom. Thank you, Mr. Brown. So we're now moving on to new business. New business, new Madam, business. Madam Chairperson. I'd like to move, I'd like to respond to the concerns of, of uh, our community, specifically with, the, with regard to the Tanisha Coleman um, uh, state police report. I'd like to request that the chief, that, that Deputy Chief Haynes provide a copy of that report from the state police uh, to this body. The gentleman that calls in uh, frequently has raised this. I think it's important, it's a state police report. If you can provide that to us, I would appreciate that. Go ahead. Uh, I will take that back. Uh, I will take that request back to the Office of the Chief. Thank you. You let us know at the next meeting? Thank you. Yes, through the chair. Deputy Chief Haynes. Through the chair. Burton. Through the chair um, for new business. You know, many of our uh, Detroit residents <laughs> in the city of Detroit has called for a durable and sustained um, ceasefire in Gaza. Many of our Detroit residents feel um, that um, we need to um, um, pass um, a, a resolution from this. Um, honorable um, board um, in support of the free, free Palestine. Um, and so this, so I'd like to make a motion at this time on behalf of our Detroit residents um, who's been very vocal in these meetings um, that we, so I move that we pass the ceasefire surveillance um, Resolution that was um, that was introduced um, to this to this board. Mr. Madam Chairman, is a second. A friendly no. Can I suggest a friendly amendment through the chair? 
Exactly. Um, the language is with the attorney right now, so I think yes. that we need to wait for the attorney to draft the language for the motion, for the resolution, with regards to the ceasefire um, resolution before we vote on anything else. To the, right, yeah. Commissioner, that, that resolution was given to the attorney the, the, for her to look over it, resolution and she will get back with us. To the chair, um, the Adam resolution. Chair, was there a second to that motion? Were there actually? Yes, Commissioner Bernard second that. No, I was mm -hmm. I was asking for a point of clarification because I thought that the board should draft its own resolution um, regarding uh, the ceasefire and and the surveillance, and we can use your motion as a base for that. But you seconded last week and week before. You I'll second. Madam Chair, I'll without second, a second, I'll second. That motion is not before the board. It's not before it, the board. It, now remember, I, you said that there was not. She just seconded. There was not. A resolution that it was resolved because it didn't. I guess my attorney had to look it over. Just second it. She just seconded, and I the second. board has seen this resolution. Discussion. And we Is there a discussion? It. Oh, you have to read. Parliamentary. If the motion has been properly, if the motion has been properly seconded, then you need to state what the motion is, and then open right. up the floor for debate. So your motion. Okay. So the um, should I read the resolution? No. No. Okay. So the, the 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 resolution is calling for a ceasefire and surveillance um, resolution um, in in Gaza. So it was a, it was a resolution that was passed. So I, what I'm, is your motion? This for the board to approve the the ceasefire um, and surveillance resolution. So we are asking that. This motion is for the board to approve the ceasefire resolution for ceasefire in Gaza. Is there? With ceasefire and surveillance. And surveillance in through, Gaza. Through the, through the chair. What you said? And it was seconded, properly seconded by Commissioner. Her, for discussion. Commissioner Hernandez. With, Thank with you. She, with, you. You stated and you see second it, and right. I, now you, are you open it for Is there discussion? any discussion? Commissioner Hernandez. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I, I think it's, it's ridiculously premature, given that we have a motion that was provided by the commissioner that's under review by our attorney. I think it's entirely premature for us to even be in a position to vote. I know that the outcome of this vote is not reflective of our stance, and I want to make that entirely clear for the public and for anyone in the media that might be here. It's completely irresponsible to, to even suggest that we present a motion when there's work behind the scenes going on. So I ask yes, that sir. we actually table, and I'll make a motion that we table this for two weeks until we have that response from the board attorney. Okay. Madam Chair. Yes. Was there a motion to refer the resolution to the lawyer? Yes. If there was a motion to refer the resolution to the attorney, then this current motion is not in order because the board has referred this matter to the attorney. And so uh, unless you want to rescind the motion to refer it to the attorney, you cannot make a motion that is essentially hijacking the motion you made last week. That would not be in order. Now, if the, if the board has changed its mind about referring it to the attorney, then the board can rescind the motion to refer to the attorney and then vote on this motion. But that the, the, the motion to refer it to the attorney means that you have asked for an opinion and that matter is still under the control of the board. But you can't have both motions. And we did send it off for her to look at. Madam Chair, you can simply Bell. rule that the motion is out of order and we can move on. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Woods, through the, through the chair, through the Commissioner chair. Commissioner Woods, when, when, for, for point of information, Burton, you, when, you have not been when was the resolution uh, emailed to the uh, attorney? Was it emailed? When was it emailed? At what day? What time? This is information that we need Mr. to know Burton. for point of information. Excuse, excuse and me. And also, look at the, bo Commissioner look at the board attorney's attendance. Let's look at her attendance. When you have, are out of order, it, and when has she Burton. given legal opinions? And when have she haven't been able to give a legal opinion for the board to is, have to, to is, be able is to? It, is it out of order? Effectively. It's out of order. Okay. So, that, all right. So, so if it's out of order, it's out of order. It's not out of order. Order for point of information. Yeah. Commissioner Burton, orders, you haven't been recognized you, to even speak. 
there has to be respect and decorum in here. I, mean, I understand where you, uh, Commissioner, uh, through the chair, Commissioner Burton, I know where you're trying to get to. It's all about decorum. It's all about. Thank you, and I understand respect. your passion. I'm, I'm not against what you're trying to do, but please respect me. I understand what you're saying. We have had this board. We had the resolution. The resolution was sent to the attorney. The attorney is not here. To the chair, please have some class and please have some respect wow. for a senior statesman on this board. Um, you know, I, I'm the. I need you to have class. You know, and I've been here over a decade. I am respecting. And I know I'm, I'm, this this resolution can be brought up. Yes. Yes. It can yes. be brought up each week under new business. I, I like to. I like. And, and I still. Like uh, uh, I like to make a motion. stands for the ceasefire um, um, resolution, calling to calling for a ceasefire resolution like, and free, free Palestine, free, free. Palestine. I would like to make a motion to censor uh, Commissioner Burton for his disrespect and his disregard of the process. And so I'm making a motion that we censor uh, uh, Commissioner Willie Burton for his utter disrespect and disregard of the process, over talking. Uh, and this being his his posture and his demeanor is negative and it's terrible and it's an affront to the citizens of the city of Detroit and so I ask that this board I, I make a motion that we censor him second we have a, a motion to censor Commissioner Willie Burton is there a second second M madam Chair. is there any discussion yes first of all I'm not sure that our bylaws have looked at them, give us anyone the right to censor it does. elected members of a it board. Does. No, I'm not, I'm, no. Yes, We'd have to, first of all, you'd have to reference that, that bylaw that does okay. that and also okay. find out what percentage of a vote you would need to do that. Okay. Um, so I think, I guess to me, you have to table that motion at, at that point, because I don't know the rules. And I don't think anyone, I, I know Robert's Rules gives you the right to censor, and, and I appreciate, but I don't know what our bylaws say. Our bylaws say it very, well, very I, clearly. No. I, re, I, re, I read Chairing, Chairing okay. this meeting, you know, I do de demand respect. I respect each and every commissioner, all of my colleagues, and you timely just continue to disrespect me. I address you in an appropriate manner, but you over-talk me. And, and because you feel that you are the senior person of this board, or you may feel that you know more than me, you feel that there's a, a reason of disrespect towards me. We don't that have a form, Madam Chairperson. Is Madam Chair, One, two. Article 10 okay. of the BOPC okay. bylaw states the following. Once the chairperson declares a breach of order, a penalty may be imposed by a majority vote to require the non-compliant board member to leave. We, for and the we don't have a quorum anymore. We don't have right. a quorum anymore. Well, you don't have a quorum, so you can't vote on anything. We motion to adjourn. Motion for adjourn. Yes. Second. I'll do my report. You have to pronounce it. The meeting is adjourned. Meeting adjourned. is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.